Hello friend, thanks for joining me for another book chat. Let's spend a few minutes with Corel of Brest by Jean Genet. This book was originally published back in 1947. I read up on it and apparently it was published anonymously at the time in a limited edition of 460 copies that were numbered and illustrated by Jean Cocteau. So, Carell of Breast by Jean Genet. I read this edition, this English translation. From what I can tell, this is the only translation from the French into English by Gregory Streatham. And I'm going to talk more about this translation a little bit later in this chat. But I decided to read this, you know, a couple of years ago. I read Our Lady of the Flowers by Jean Genet, and I really, really enjoyed that a lot. And so I wanted to read this also because I've seen the film adaptation. This was adapted into a film in 1982, directed by Rainier Werner Fassbinder. It was his last uh, film that he directed. And I've seen the film, but the film kind of left me scratching my head about part of the plot. But this, this chat is really going to be only about the book. I'm not really going to talk about the film. And there are some differences. But um, one thing I want to say about this book is that I'm going to keep this chat to being PG-13, although this book is not a PG-13 book. It deals with quite a bit of sexuality, explicit sexuality. The other thing is about spoilers. So there's several crimes in this book that occur, but the book is not, in my opinion, it's not plot-driven. Really, the psycho psychosexual psychology of most of the characters. And so that's the interesting part, not so much a plot. But on the other hand, I so I will talk uh, in, you know about the plot. I won't give away sort of the ultimate resolution of the plot. That I will not give away. But um, having said that, um, it's set. The setting is in Brest, France. It's a port city. Um, and it's, you know, with the book, it's, it's, there's a lot of fog. So every time the, the main characters sort of go outdoors at all, outside, it, there's just fog everywhere. And so it's, it, it gives the, fee, the it, it you know, lends the emotional tone of sort of an, um, you know, like an unreality or a dreamy kind of thing. Also, the fog can sort of confuse things, right? And lots of things can go on in the fog you know, some sort of nefarious things can go on in the fog when they're not observed by others. And so that's also kind of a theme, I think, of the fog, that there's this, this world that exists, um, kind of an underworld. The main character is named Georges Carell. He's a young sailor. He's also a drug smuggler, thief, and also a murderer, a multi-murderer. So, you know, he's got some criminal past and present that's going on in this book. Now, he's in this town. He's stationed on a ship that is in port in Brest. And his brother is also there. He, his brother, Robert, is um, having an affair with the madam of, of, of a local brothel. Um, her name is Madame Lisette. And Madame Lisette is married then to a man named Norbert, better known, most of the time known as No-No. And then um, there's this cop, Mario, um, that hangs out at the brothel, sort of like getting information. Um, the cop sort of exists in this world where he's not really, I mean, he holds, upholds the law on the one hand, but he also um, lives in this underworld as well. And then he has an informant, a narc named Dede. Then there's this other character, this Mason, um, whose name is Gilles. He is, um, he's getting sort of sexually harassed by another one of the Masons called Tio, also Carell and the Lieutenant. So the Lieutenant of his ship is a homosexual man who really, um, is, lives this really isolated life. He really, um, pines away for Carell, but nobody knows this, right? Uh, although Carell has sort of the instincts and knows that he can has this sort of power over the lieutenant, but the lieutenant we get to know mainly through his, his journal. So um, those are the main characters. Now, as the story opens, Carell has 
is come, has come into port and he's smuggling some opium and he needs to get this opium to the to Nono at the brothel and he's got an accomplice another sailor and they need to use each other to get this opium past the customs which they do well so they get the opium past the customs but then um uh Corel betrays his accomplice and actually murders him um, and then takes the opium really then all for himself and takes it to no no you know and has therefore has all the money so this is kind of a recurring theme I think with especially with Corel his betrayal he's a uh, as I mentioned earlier he's got a criminal past and a present and he does betray basically almost everybody um, at one point or another but um, so then um, is part of his uh, he's thinking about this crime that he committed and he's thinking he should go and finally do this execution, he calls it. Now, Nono is the husband of the brothel owner, right? So they live at the brothel. What Nono does, though, sometimes is these guys that come into the brothel, as often, often the sailors, they can throw dice with Dono, Nono and then if they lose... They have to submit to a sexual act with, uh, with Nono. And um, if they win, you know, they, of course they get money. But um, this happens periodically. So his execution, Carell decides, is going to be doing this wager with Nono, which he sets out then to purposely lose. So he engages in this act with Nono. This is a very non-emotional act. It is just strictly this one act. Um, there's no no uh, really emotion at all because one thing Carell and the rest of the characters in the book that live in this sort of underworld is that any sort of intimacy with sex is not something they uh, will do. So um, Carell doesn't really have that much struggles because he doesn't consider himself a homosexual. He considers you know this just to be a thing he decided to do. Um, and so, you know, that starts him out, though, on this journey. So we find out, though, through history, the history of, of Carell, we find out of some earlier encounters he had had with homosexuals, um, who he then murdered, uh, robbed and murdered for various reasons. Um, but, you know, he was very careful, um, you know, to not be a person like getting, getting any kind of, any sort of intimacy with these, with these people. Well, Carell kind of has like a um, attraction in some ways to Mario the cop. Well, Nono, first of all, tells Robert, his brother, about what had happened, that he had rolled the dice and that Carell had purposely lost, and they had done this thing together, and um, that Robert, you know, can't believe it, and then they fight. Well, also the same thing sort of happens with Mario, and, um, and Carell has this tr attraction, you know, so he's starting to, like, have these sort of feelings and, 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 and sort of impulses that, to sort of take that further, because as I mentioned, with Nono, it's strictly this one act, there's nothing else, um, but he does, Carell does uh, start to sort of explore these feelings. Now, he eventually, um, he needs to figure out also a way uh, to manipulate, so he's manipulating everybody around him as well, he needs to manipulate Mario the cop, because he needs to throw the cops off his trail for the murder of the, you know, the, his accomplice back at the beginning of the book. Well, um, there's been another murder. So Jill, the mason that I mentioned, Tio is the, his co-mason that's been sort of sexually harassing him. He loses his temper at one point and kills Tio in front of everybody in a bar. So then he goes into hiding. So everybody in the bar knows he did it. So then Carell's like, hmm, yeah, if he's going to have this one murder everybody knows he did, then it's, it's, it's just one more step then to um, pin that, pin the murder of his accomplice on Jill, Jill as well. Well, eventually... Um, Carell does find Gilles and start, sort of starts up this relation, starts manipulating him both um, e emotionally, psychologically, I mean, as well as sexually uh, uh, manipulating Gilles. Um, and then, you know, um, ultimately, though, is, is Carell going to follow this path or is he going to betray everybody? Um, you know, 
I don't, you know, I'll leave that part to, to a future reader if you haven't read it. But there's a couple of quotes here that I thought were really, really sort of, um, first of all, uh, are examples of the writing style of Jean Genet, but secondly, illustrate the sort of the two main takeaways that I had from the book. I mean, a lot of the reviews I read talk about the betrayal aspect and, and that sort of thing, but I really found the most interesting parts of the uh, book to be the lieutenant, the relationship between Carell and the lieutenant, and the lieutenant's loneliness that we see through his and his longing that he um, sort of shows in his journals that he writes. And there's a quote here that sort of illustrates that really well, I think, and it says, Carell has left his jersey behind in my cabin. This is in his journal. Here it lies on the floor as he left it. I do not dare so much as to touch it. This striped na naval jersey has all the strong and powerful appeal of a leopard skin. And more besides, it is the very animal lurking there, entirely wrapped up in itself and showing only its outward form. Of course he had to throw it exactly there. But I have only to stretch out my hand to touch it, and it will immediately swell up and fill out with the strength of Carell's muscles. Got this longing for Carell that's just unrequited, and um, Carell knows how to manipulate that and knows how to kind of turn on the charm and turn on the sexuality of his presence with the lieutenant to manipulate him. And then the other sort of interesting thing, the most interesting thing to me was really the the psychosexual sort of evolution that Carell undergoes throughout the through the novel, especially starting with the encounter with Nono, with the roll of the dice, and then where he goes with the other characters, Mario, the cop, as well as Gilles, and the lieutenant, ultimately. Um, there's a quote here that I think kind of illustrates that as well. This is um, Mario, uh, his um, interaction he's having with Mario, the cop. And he says, for the first time in his life, Carell was kissing a man on the mouth. It seemed to him that he was pressing his face against a mirror that gave back his own image and that his tongue was excavating the inside of a statue's granite head. Yet this being an act of love, of culpable love, he knew that he was committing evil because he's having that level of intimacy that is, a, that is forbidden in his mind as far as crossing that line into something forbidden for him or something evil for him. And then later on in the novel, he's talking, uh, he has this relationship with the lieutenant, and Carell says, um, it says here, Carell smiled at being so very near the brink of shame from which no escape was now possible and in which he might well discover lasting peace. He felt so enfeebled, so completely overcome, that the following phrase formed in his mind, born of the desolate autumnal thoughts of all his blemishes, of all his delicate but death-dealing wounds. Here's someone who will follow in my footsteps. So he's almost to give in to this sort of emotional, uh, sort of intimate attachment, with another man, but he's not, uh, he's had conflicted about that, and whether or not he decides to do that, I will not disclose. <laughs> you know, I wanted to say before I close about the translation, so the translation is pretty literary. There's some of these words, now these are sailors, and so you would expect words, especially related to sex and sexuality, for them to be pretty easy and straightforward, but a lot, some of these words that are used to describe this, I had to actually look up. Um, and so to me that, I wonder if that's a choice that the translator made to maybe make this book a little more PG-13 because it's definitely um, pretty explicit, um, even reading through that sort of language that, were, that was used here. But I would really be sort of interested to see a different translation or I wish I could kind of read this in French to see what the original was like. But nevertheless, I enjoyed this a lot. You know, Jean Genet just writes this subject really well, this sort of criminality, underworld, homosexual themes. Um, and so definitely a treat to read. Um, and, you know, I just found it, I found it very enjoyable. So, but I will leave the chat of this here. My next chat is actually going to be The Quest for Hermes Trismegistus. From Ancient Egypt to the Modern World by Gary Lockman, and I have already finished this book, and I should have a chat on it coming up fairly soon. Until next time, take care.